Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our culture unit today. We're talking about different kinds of people and languages and food all around the world. Today, we are going to let's see where are we going Malaysia, and we're also going to Singapore and Indonesia for this particular culture called the Baba Nyanyas. They are a blend of cultures, and they've settled in various regions in the country. That I just indicated. That's right. I had not heard of these titles before. Baba is applied to men, and Nyanya is applied to women. We're going to find out more about their culture, which, as Tom said, is a blend or a mixture of their original country and then their new country that they've adopted. They don't have any words for us, Tom. We're kind of like these people where we've left our original country and we've set roots down here in Taiwan.、Uh, But、uh, yeah. yeah, has it changed anything in your life? Like, has your language changed at all?、Uh, probably, but、uh, I don't want to say exactly how it has changed. I have to、uh, tell you, I just got back from a vacation with friends who only speak English, and I had to keep changing words because I was used to hanging out with people who could understand English and Mandarin. Both,、mm. like、mm. when I talk to you, you know, I'll throw in Chinese words if they're just close to my brain. But over there, because we were out of the country, I kept thinking, "Oh, they don't know what 'how' means, or they don't know what 'dengi xia' means." And it was weird because those things just kind of come out of your mouth after you've lived here for a long time. Or they won't know what 'zhong xiao bei lu' is, or 'zhong xiao dong lu'. You know, 'zhong xiao dong what? Oh, yeah, 'zhong xiao East Road.、Yeah. Uh, you have to say that. I know. But in any case, this is kind of similar. This is kind of related because、uh-huh. we've got some people who. Basically, came from China, and then they settled in this area of Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore,、mm-hmm. and they brought their own customs with them, and then they adopted some new ones and、yeah. came up with something original, something brand new. So let's find out what this is all about. The Baba Nyanyas, a blend of cultures. Let's listen to today's article read one time. Global migration, once a laborious effort, is now common thanks to modern transportation. In fact, 244 million people were living in countries other than their birthplace in 2015, according to a United Nations report. This trend is hardly a recent phenomenon, however. Humans have been exploring Earth for thousands of years. During these explorations. Many migrants settled in the lands they'd discovered, and assimilated into the local way of life. One such instance occurred when Chinese traders traveled the Strait of Malacca for trade in the 15th and 16th centuries. At that time, they settled in present-day Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia, marrying the local people and starting families. Over time. These immigrants not only continued to observe these Chinese customs, but also adopted many of the area's local traditions. What's more, they picked up customs from Dutch and British colonists. This multicultural group eventually became known as the Baba Nyanya people. In Malay, Baba and Nyanya are honorifics given to men and women, respectively. The Baba Nyanyas are now known for their unique fusion of language, architecture, fashion, and cuisine. For instance, though they were descendants of Chinese immigrants, the creators of this new culture adopted its name from the Malay language. In the past, their language was a mixture of Hokkien Chinese and Malay, as well as Dutch or English, depending on their location. Nowadays, though. English and Chinese are the Baba Nyanya's primary languages. The Baba Nyanya's distinct architecture is also a reflection of the group's fusion of cultures. A blend of Eastern and Western styles, their traditional houses feature full-length French windows and colorful ceramic tiles, likely introduced by the Dutch. Eastern architecture influenced the house's structure. Large open courtyards made socializing easier for large families, and kept the houses cool in summer.
Okay, everybody, let's break down today's lesson for you. It's our unit on culture, and the topic is the Baba Nyanyas, a blend of cultures, a blend or a mixture of cultures. That's what a blend means here. Just mixing things together, like blended Scotch whiskey versus single malt whiskeys. If you're into that sort of thing, I guess coffees sometimes are blended,、mm. different flavors kind of put together. Well, let's look at the first paragraph here. It says, "Global migration, once a laborious effort, is now common thanks to modern transportation." So, if you talk about global migration, you're talking about people. Moving around the world, basically moving、mm-hmm. from one place to another. You could talk about the migration of Europeans to North America over the past what three, four hundred years or so, and of course, various kinds of people move from different places to other places. That would be part of global migration. You can also use the word migration to refer to birds flying from different parts of the world. And it was once a laborious effort. Laborious means it involves a lot of labor or a lot of work. That's right. We're still seeing a lot of global migration these days. Sometimes it has to do with refugees, people who are in their own nation that's torn apart by war or some sort of conflict, needing to leave and、uh, moving on to different countries. We all know about the Syrian crisis, where a lot of the folks had to leave and take their families and move to other countries and set up shop, set up homes there. So we're still seeing a lot of global migration. And it's really more common these days, thanks to modern transportation. Transportation just refers to the ability to move from one place to another. We've got a lot of public transportation choices right here in Taiwan. We've got the MRT, the bus system. Having just returned from Europe and New York City, I have to say our MRT is really great. It's clean. It's on time. It's got air conditioning. It's wonderful. So that's. A type of transportation, the subway, but there are other ways to transport people or things. You might use large trucks. You know, you've seen those big trucks that、uh, transport goods from the manufacturing place to stores, so they can be sold. But、uh, because of modern transportation, like great airplanes, people are able to get around this earth a lot more easily than they were able to in the past. Yep, in the past, you may have had to ride horseback or take a boat across a big ocean,、mm. a sailboat or something. But now you can fly. Transportation is much more efficient, and in fact, to 244 million people were living in countries other than their birthplace in 2015, according to a United Nations report. So that's quite a few people moving from one country to another. They're living in a country now, and they weren't born in that country. They immigrated from one country to another. That's us, Tom. That's、uh, true, indeed.、Yeah. Although we're not citizens of Taiwan just yet,、mm-hmm. but、uh, this trend is hardly a recent phenomenon. However, of course, this has been going on for many, many centuries.、Mm-hmm. Humans have been exploring Earth for thousands of years.、Uh, to explore means you just go out to some place and you check it out, and you haven't been there before, and you're just kind of seeing what it is all about. We usually use this word to talk about the explorers from Europe going into the Americas, but it could be anyone going anywhere. People going into space, going down to Antarctica or whatever, or even just simple travel. Travelers traveling to a new country and exploring the place.、Mm-hmm. Now, during these explorations, many migrants settled in the lands they discovered, and they assimilated into the local way of life. So, if you're a migrant or an immigrant, you're a person who moves from one place to another. Migrants have a special definition. They actually move to a new land in order to find work. So, a lot of times, we'll talk about the migrants in America who move from state to state, looking for opportunities, especially in farming. When they're going out and helping farmers harvest their crops, maybe a farmer has been growing wheat or corn. They need help sometimes. Besides using the big pieces of machinery nowadays, they'll still have. People who help 
bring in those crops that they've grown. So if you assimilate, guys, you're somebody who is able to change and modify and kind of fit in with your new surroundings. True assimilation would mean you would learn that new country's language, and you would learn their culture and traditions, and you'd blend in. Not all migrants or immigrants actually are assimilating these days. We're finding out that people are tending not to assimilate very well, which is making it difficult. They probably will eventually with the succeeding generations, but in any case, here you've got migrants. Usually, they are people who go someplace to work. Yeah, like Indonesians come to Taiwan to work, and eventually they kind of stay here for many, many years.、Mm. I don't know whether they actually assimilate into the local way of life, but that's another topic for another day. But it's kind of an example, and one such instance or an example occurred when Chinese traders、mm. traveled the Strait of Malacca. For trade in the 15th and 16th centuries, so you've got some Chinese merchants, some traders leaving China and heading down to Malaysia and Indonesia. There, the、uh, Strait of Malacca is a body of water between Malaysia and the Indonesian island of Sumatra, and there are a lot of ports down there where you can, you know, pick up some stuff and take it back to China. You can do some trade there. This happened way back in the 15th and 16th centuries. Are the 1700s and the 1600s, and at that time they settled in present-day Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia, marrying the local people and starting families. So that's what happened there. Yes, those places are all around the Strait of Malacca, and they stayed there. They thought, hey, this is cool. Why go back to Beijing with all that cold weather? It's nice and warm down here in the tropics. Let's just hang out here and live here forever. <laughs> We're gonna find out what happened to these folks after they immigrated, but first, we're gonna listen to our Chinese teacher. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第七单元。好，这个单元里面要探讨的是娘惹文化。这篇文章里面，我们要来探讨一下他们各个层面，以及很有趣的中西合璧、多彩多姿的文化。我们先看到全球迁徙 （global migration）。换句话说，大家不一定局限在自己的原来生长的地方，会移动到别的地区，为了更好的生活条件。那这里呢，就有一个数字，表示在二零一五年的时候，竟然有两亿四千四百万人口，他们是住在出生地以外的地方。我们看 ，other than their birthplace， 这 other than 其实就是 different from， 也就是不是他们出生的地方，是在他们出生地之外的地方。哇、wow, 是不是只有现在才这样呢？他说。Hardly, hardly a recent phenomenon. 意思就是不是哦。原来其实人类呢已经移动，然后到别的地方定居下来，而且还融入当地的生活方式。那我们来看一下这个段落里头有一个字，就是 migrant 跟 migration。我们知道他们是来自同一个字根 migrate。M I G R A T E 就是移动、移居。Migration 是它的名词。A migrant 就是指移居者。那这样子来说，我们要讨论的重点来了，就是在西元十五到十六世纪之间，当时有些中国商人呢，他们呢为了贸易的因素而经过了 Malacca 这个海峡。Malacca 就是。马六甲海峡，而所以现在呢，我们看到的马来西亚也好，新加坡也好，在印尼地方就在这里定居下来。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're diving into our culture unit. We're talking about the Baba Nyanyas, a group of people who have managed to blend their original culture and traditions with their new home, where they find different types of cuisine, different kinds of architecture, things like that, and they've kind of mixed the two together. So when we left you. 
We were talking about Chinese traders who, way back in the 1400s and 1500s, came through the Strait of Malacca and settled in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and they started marrying the local people and starting families. That's what they did. So they married the local people, started families, and kind of settled down and assimilated into that new culture. It says over time, these immigrants not only continued to observe their Chinese customs. But also adopted many of the area's local traditions, so they held on to some of their old culture. But then they opened their arms and accepted some of the new tradition that they saw around them, and it was kind of a blend of both. I wanted to mention we've got a grammar structure here in this sentence that is very popular in Taiwan.、Mm. Not only, but also. You guys, I hear you use this structure a lot. It's great that you know how to use it, but don't use it quite as much as I see. If you're writing a paper, you shouldn't use this structure more than once in the paper. It gets overused in Taiwan, so try to not keep using it too much. I hear this one more often than anything else. Now, observe is one of our vocabulary words here.、It、just means to watch something or someone carefully, kind of pay attention to what they're doing. You're very attentive to that thing or person that you're observing. You might not get involved. You might just be a bystander, looking, watching, standing back. But、uh, that's what they were able to do. These immigrants kept some of their old customs, but adopted some of the new traditions as well. I could say they continue to practice their Chinese customs.、Mm-hmm. They maintained those customs, but they also adopted many of the area's local traditions. Yes, they're in another country. Yes, we'd like to stay being Chinese, but we have to admit the locals here seem to do some things better than we do. So let's adopt those. Let's use those, but keep some other things of our own. And then you kind of mix these things together. It's kind of similar to us. You know, we like Western food, of course. But we also like Chinese food. It's cheaper. It's tastier. So、uh, we, of course, eat a lot of the local food and don't eat hamburgers as much as people think we do. There's a really famous idiom that applies to this situation, and it's when in Rome. Do as the Romans do. So when you're in a particular place or country, you kind of want to blend in and follow what the local people are doing. But like Tom said, we kind of have a mix of both. I eat tacos today, which is a Mexican cuisine, but I love Chinese food too. So moving on, what's more, it says they picked up customs from Dutch and British colonists. So the Dutch had also immigrated, and some British folks were there in those places as well: Malaysia, Singapore, and. Indonesia. If you're a colonist, you're someone who leaves your country and settles in a new area. You're kind of a pioneer. That's another word for that. And it can be kind of scary and a little bit risky because you don't know what you're going to come up against. But thanks to the colonists, they were able to see even more types of cultures and cuisines from the Dutch and British. They had a really big selection, you could say, of cultures to pick from. Yeah, the Dutch had a colony there, I think, in Malaysia, Dutch Malacca, or something.、Mm-hmm. And of course, we know the British tend to be all over the place. Back then, yeah. So these、uh, people from Europe were colonizing different parts. Of the world, and the person who does that is a colonist, or the people who live in that colony are also referred to as colonists. And this multicultural group eventually became known as the Baba Nyanya people. Now, in Malay, Baba and Nyanya are honorifics given to men and women respectively. So, an honorific, of course, is kind of an honorable title. So, if you're male, you're called Baba. Like it's kind of like Sir, I guess, and、uh, Nyanya would be. Madam, the equivalent there, and respectively means the things we're mentioning here match up with the things that we just mentioned before. I could say, for example, that when I was a kid,、mm. girls and boys played jacks and marbles, respectively. The girls played jacks and the boys played marbles. I don't know how to translate jacks into Chinese. Well, there, I love but, that、uh, game. <laughs>、uh, yeah, you bounce a ball and you pick up these little objects, these little, little silver, metal objects. Yeah, yeah. silver stars. Stars, kind of thing.、Mm. Now the Baba Nyanyas are now known for the unique fusion of language, architecture, fashion, and cuisine. Fusion is a word you often see if you're looking at 
new types of restaurants in particular. Fusion means to blend two different things, two or more things together. So it's a mixture. So they blended their language, their architecture, which means the style or design of buildings, fashion, their clothes, what they used to wear, and what they wear now, and cuisine. Of course, we use this word to describe. A group's food. So we've got Chinese cuisine, Mexican cuisine. I don't know if American cuisine is all that special. Maybe we have hamburgers or British cuisine.、Uh, different types of food. So they blended all of these things together, and that's referred to as a fusion of something. You'll often see a restaurant that says Asian American fusion. So they've taken both these types of cuisines and kind of. Put them together. That fusion thing is quite common, I understand,、yeah. with food trucks、totally. in, say, Austin, Texas, or places、New、like、York. that, New York,、yeah. etc. So yes, they mix things together all the time. I've heard of Korean tacos or something like that. Now, those are good. Yeah. Well, for instance, though, they were descendants of Chinese immigrants, of course, so they maintain their Chinese customs and traditions. And the creators of this new culture adopted its name from the Malay language. So yes, even though they're Chinese people, they thought, "Yeah, we're Chinese, but let's call our culture by the local name." Better, maybe, perhaps, as a way to assimilate into the culture and not be discriminated against.、Mm-hmm. I'm not sure exactly why they did that, but what the heck, Baba Nanya sounds pretty cool there. And so that's the name they took for themselves from the Malay language. And in the past, their language was a mixture of Hokkien Chinese and Malay, as well as Dutch or English, depending on their location. Now, yes, these Chinese immigrants probably didn't come from Beijing, as I said earlier. They were more likely from southern China, from Hokkien, which is Fujian Province. So it's probably something very similar to Taiwanese. And that was their language, and they mixed it together with Malay, and then of course there was some Dutch influence there, and some English. I don't know a word of Dutch, even though my ancestors came from Holland, and、uh, they spoke some English too, of course. And this all kind of depended on where they were. If they were in the Dutch colony of Malacca, they probably adopted some Dutch words. If they were kind of away from there, probably not so much. This word "primary" just means the thing that's most important. So it could be the principal languages, the most important languages. It can also mean the earliest. We often refer to elementary school as primary school. You might have heard that before.、It、just means elementary, which is usually grades one to six. Moving on to the final paragraph. Oh, I wanted to mention something. Yeah. Now, when I read this, Tom, I pronounce Malay, but you say Malay. Um, they're both okay, correct. Yeah,、wrong. one of my friends is from Malaysia, and I've heard Malay, but Malay is absolutely correct. They're both correct pronunciations. You can use whatever you want. Now, I've look- only been there once, so I'm not sure what they said when I was there. That、yeah. was way back in the 1990s. But again, the point is, is that English and Chinese nowadays are their primary languages. Most Now, important, yeah. That's the important thing. I guess you'll do okay there if you speak、uh, Taiwanese with them. They'll probably understand you pretty、mm. well. Now, the Baba Nanya's distinct architecture is also a reflection of the group's fusion of cultures. So we've got their architecture, the way they construct their houses and their buildings. It's Quite distinct, which means it's unique. If、mm-hmm. you look at it, you can tell what it is.、Yep. It is different from other types of architecture, and that's a reflection of their fusion of cultures and a blend of Eastern and Western styles. Their traditional houses feature full-length French windows. Beautiful. So there's some French influence、mm. there, and colorful ceramic tiles, likely introduced by the Dutch. So yes, there's ceramic tiles that are very colorful. You don't really see those so much. In Taiwan, you do see ceramic tiles, but they're not extremely colorful. They're kind of bland colors, at least to me. They seem that way. Sometimes there are tiles on the temples, though, that I've seen. Ah,、uh, true. That's a, ceramic、yeah. tiles also remind me of Greece and their、mm-hmm. home. So they were. Likely introduced by the Dutch, Eastern architecture influenced the house's structure or the setup, how it's arranged. They have large open courtyards that you often see in Chinese architecture, like the San Huayuan. Yeah, where people come together and socialize and get some of their business done. So this made it easier for the large families and kept the houses cool in summer because in those areas it's very hot. I must say, right now, guys, we're out of Time and we got to listen to our Chinese teacher one more time, but we'll be back to say goodbye. 好，那我们来继续看
。那这些移民到了一个新的环境之后，当然会 observe their Chinese customs。换句话说，继续遵守中国的习俗。可是 not only but also， 不光是如此，而且还怎么样？我们知道这是一个连接词片语，前后这两个所接的东西应该是平行的。也就是，如果它接的是一个动词，后面那就是另外一个动词。或者是动词片语，如果它前面接的一个形容词，后面就跟着形容词。在这里，这个连接词片语用到的很明显，它接了两个动词。好，那就说了，他们呢还吸收了这一些的地方的地方传统，因此呢，我们会发现这里真是一个 multicultural， 也就是有各种的多元文化族群。我们看到这个字 multicultural， multi 这个字根就是代表多重的，所以我们看到，哎，我们写选择题 multiple choice， 哎，这个 m u l t i 记得就是不止一个是多元的。那这些多元的文化族群，我们叫它什么呢？这些就是所谓的八八娘惹人。好，我们来看这个片语。Be known as. 如果你用 as 这样子的话，后面接的就是一个称呼名号，以什么样的称号而有名。如果你接的 for， 那就变成以什么特色而有名。我们这一篇文章里头两个用法都有出现。这边是 known as， 我们就称它为“爸爸娘惹人”。当然，在马来语里面。爸爸跟娘惹分别是对男性跟女性的称呼。我们继续往下看，下面就说了：哎，这个爸爸娘惹，其实现在我们要知道，他们在语言也好、建筑也好、时尚也好、饮食也好这四大方向，我们都可以看得出来文化的融合。好，那这边就用到刚刚说的偏语 “be known for”， 以什么特色而闻名？好，我们要来先从语言谈起。语言说起来，它的语言呢，其实融合了福建话，融合了马来语，还融合了荷兰语和英文，所以这可以看出，真的是一个 a blend of cultures。接下来最后这一段呢，除了谈到语言之外，就要进行它建筑部分的讨论了。在建筑方面，它的确也是一个文化大熔炉的那种样貌。哎，怎么说呢？这边就说它是。A blend of Eastern and Western styles, 中西合璧。我们怎么说它是中西合璧？这边后面继续告诉大家，它的建筑体哦，它有那种什么样的特色？好，先看到动词 feature。Feature 就是以什么为特色，有什么样的特色 ？Four lines French windows. 它的窗户，哇哦，是落地窗哦。然后他又提到 colorful ceramic tiles， 那可能跟荷兰人有关，因为他们引进了这种多彩多姿的陶瓷瓷砖。好，有这样的特色，这是西方部分。接下来看到东方部分。东方的部分呢，那就看到我们有庭院，有一个前面大院子，因为这是一个大家庭里面一个社交的场合，而且还可以让房子在夏天保持舒适凉爽。这样说起来，它真的的确在建筑方面呈现了东西合璧的特色。好，我们今天讲解就到这边结束，我们下次见。That's it for today, everybody. But we're not done talking about the babanyanas. We're going to continue talking about them in our next program. So please make sure you join us then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. See、Goodbye. ya.